I'm just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. If you mean true for you is different from true for anybody else, have yeah, something to absolutely, true for you. because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, citizens of Netlandia, and welcome back to O'Reilly Radio. This is uh, now going to be show 146, since we've actually changed a dateline and everything. So I th- think that's more appropriate, and uh, the topics are, well, slightly different. We're going to actually be talking about hopefully some nicer things, though a few bad things have crept up today, <laughs> because it's 2017. And nothing matters. There you go. But at least the coffee machine's working, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, it is Friday. No, it's not Friday. It is Saturday. (laughs) I need to change that. It is Saturday, February 25th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your entertainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and we have Daniel Atherton and Amber Pasecker. We may have more people join us as, uh, as life permits, but we'll see. We'll see how all that goes. Um. I would like to thank our Patreon supporters for making all of this possible. That'd be Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, Daniel Duncan, and Dan Smith. And, of course, uh, some of our listeners out there who have provided feedback, like the entire reason we're having a a second show this weekend, Um, (laughs) because the first show was basically all a response to some some audience feedback. So thank you very much, Kristen, for that. and apparently, uh, we're going to see her at, uh, or them, we're going to see them at ReasonCon. Hey. So apparently we need to look for a nun outfit. That's what I, <laughs> so that should be fun. I'm always how looking for nun outfits. How many nuns? How many, how many nuns? Yes. How many nuns? I'm thinking that as an individual, they can only be a singular nun. Perhaps they are the none of above. So the pronoun is them, is what you're saying. I, so you're saying I do not know what the pronoun the is, so I'm playing it of safe. Above in, in anticipation of, of how they're going to change schools. So we can have a school of the church of above. A school of nuns? Yes, a school of nuns. Of is the what above. you're looking for? Can you put them in a bowl? What do you have to feed them? <laughs> what do you feed any nun? Other nuns. Just remember, don't That's divide disturbing. by zero. That's disturbing. That's <laughs> disturbing. Where did you get that from? Oh, my gosh. Okay. My brain. Ah, the brain. Okay. Well, those brains. Brains. And speaking of things that are brainy. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. It's not just a lot of mysterious things happening. There's a lot we understand out there. And that understanding empowers you. If you base medicine on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. That's right. So uh, we do have a we do have a few news items, but I think we'll save those for after the actual segment that we wanted to talk about in the first place. So we'll go through the science that we actually have have listed, and then we'll chit chat a little bit about um, some of the things that have happened today. Oh, yeah, because yeah. otherwise we're never going to get to the stuff that we actually write down because the yeah, world that's is, fair. The world is rotating far too fast for that, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so the cycle moves quickly. It's uh, staggering. It's absolutely staggering. Okay, but something that is. Staggering in a good way is that there is a possible new malaria vaccine that in clinical trials is being 100% effective. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, The uh, it's it's labeled PFSPZ as the malaria vaccine uh, is 100% effective in U.S. clinical trials and 48% effective in trials run in Mali, exhibiting a previously unseen level of sustained efficacy. Efficacy. There you go. Mm -hmm. In that region. 
Uh, it is just one of several promising vaccines in development, any of which would help us eradicate this deadly disease. And that has claimed so many people, like half a million lives in just two, two, 2015. Yeah, yeah. I, I was reading the, uh, the, worth, the World Health Organization predicted that almost 3.2 billion people, which is about half the world's population, are at risk. And among those at risk, 214 million were infected in 2015. And of those infected, at le- almost half a million passed away. That's 438,000. Wow. This is a nasty bug. It's a very um, nasty bug. Anything that can help... Because we really haven't eradicated anything in quite some time. Well, no, certainly not, because we've got those anti-vaxxers out there that are making that really hard. Yeah. Well, well I'm just saying on a, on a global scale, it, it's been a while since, like, we really put it to a disease. Mm. Um, of course, there's some argument, especially here in the West, that what what's good is eradication when you can just treat. Um, well, but, yeah, no. but... Those are the people that are just farmer bros, and, yeah. and we don't like them. No, we don't. Um, but no, this 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 is good. This this is tremendously good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can find the link to uh, to more details on this. Uh, the link out is going out to futurism dot com, uh, but the link will be available in our show notes at oreillyradio And that's com. the PFS. Uh, PZ is one of several, it looks like, right? Yes. Yeah. There's there are... many different ones that are being developed, but this is the one that's the most promising. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, it, it may just be that there's genetic markers in certain populations mm-hmm. that are more resistant to the vaccine than they are to malaria itself. So, as as it goes, you know, you might need a different strain of the vaccine to, to work for a different region. Like for right. uh, for us, mostly uh, in the U- U.S., who, depending on who's in that trial group, we may all have the same markers. Mm-hmm. That's fair. So that would be another uh, another level of something that they'd have to look at. But I'm not a medical researcher. I'm going to leave it to the professionals. So they just should, a thought. So they should do that. Yeah. Now that we have CRISPR, <laughs> yes, will we be able to? Once we have a, 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 a basic form, be able to customize it for those region markers? Possibly. Okay. But those markers that, would that have I'm... to be identified. And then, it would, you see, then, then you're getting into what the future of medicine is probably really going to be, which is complete genetically tailoring. Of, Your treatment. Of treatments, yeah. Okay, feeling feeling a little more hopeful. Mm-hmm. I, to, I don't ha- nothing's returned yet, but I feel a presence. <laughs> oh, could it be Zika and and malaria that is still out there? And let's say measles still in, in existence. I mean, there, there's a bunch of bugs out there that you really thought you were going to get that shard of your soul back, didn't you? I was hopeful. Well, you know what we we have. Um, I. Okay, mark it down. Thanks to the religious right and their unending quest to stop abortions and things like that, stem cell research has had to expand in ways that it wouldn't have before to get new stem cells. So just from a piece of skin from a donor, they are able to create stem cells just from that. Whereas before, stem cells were always like fetal tissue. If I'm not mistaken, you also can get them from umbilical cords. Because I did um, a cord blood donation um, when I had my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of that is is possible. That was the, like, that's the pure stuff. That's the stuff that keeps old evil people alive. (laughs) Well, thank you for... uh, Letting me know that no good deed goes unpunished. It's 2017. <laughs> and nothing matters. Okay. Sci- science like Keith Richards runs on new blood. Um, <laughs> well, I'm true. glad that I've contributed to Keith Richards' uh, life cycle. Well, remember, uh, just last like year, cicada. last year they linked up uh, an old mouse with a young mouse. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. And they basically ran the old mouse's blood through the young mouse. And mm-hmm. it, sure enough, it reversed some of the signs of aging in the old mouse. It did, however, also age the young mouse. Yeah. Oh, what a surprise. Shocking, right? It's... Yeah. Uh, so that's definitely the no good deed goes unpunished thing um, in full effect. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's true. That's true. But, you know, if you just take the blood direct from the the youngling and then pass it through the old um, enfeebled person, they would be uh, at, at least no no shock back would, would happen. At least that's the theory, right? So there's a new <laughs> horror story, uh, a medical one that can be unleashed upon the populace. So let's get back to positive science news. <laughs> new research removes a key barrier to large-scale manufacturing of low-cost, printable photo um, pero, peroskite. Perovskite. Perovskite? Perovskite. Perovskite solar cells. It, it's essentially a photovoltaic, but it's, uh, it's different. And this is an in-depth article filled with geekery. It's out on Tech Explorer, uh, T-E-C-H-X-P-L-O-R-E dot com. Um, it's very long and in, actually in, in fairly small print. But <clears throat> uh, the Toronto team's computational studies beautifully explain the role of the newly developed electron selective layer. I mean, do I really need to go further than that? Essentially, that it's a completely <laughs> new way of they have to create a, a lower layer and then they just like print on a, the circuitry? A, the, yeah i think this caption actually explains it pretty well the new perovskite solar cells have achieved an F- efficiency of 20.1 percent and can be manufactured at low temperatures which reduces the cost and expands the number of possible applications Ooh. yeah it it it's definitely more detailed than that uh for comparison the current photovoltaics uh, require a crystalline silicon, and they have to be baked at 1,000 degrees Celsius. That, that's toasty. Yeah. Uh, these, when they're being cured, they, the process always stays below 150 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh- and as far as the, the um, efficiency rating of 20.1%, Comparatively, the the current silicon solar cells reach 26.3%, not that That's much higher. So these not are too much of a drop off. These these have a bit of a drop off, but there's they're much easier to make. They're less mm-hmm. resource intensive to make. So we could start. Th- th- this is the beginning of having more affordable solar cells on consumer products. Yeah. Uh, They're actually nanoparticles. Uh, So nanoparticles are coated with a layer of chlorine atoms, which helps them bind to the perovskite... Perovskite. Perovskite. I cannot say that word at all. Uh, On top. (laughs) Okay. So that's the the underlying area. So there's nanoparticles, chlorine atoms, and then the stuff. To, no, uh, to answer Mama Van here, there's no need to can or flash freeze when you can just eat it straight from the baby. For context, for those that are listening at home, as opposed to actually watching the live, the live stream, which, of course, you should be, um, <laughs> Mama Van in the chat room says, so we should save the baby's blood before we eat it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but <laughs> adding the highly... context didn't really make it better. It didn't, uh, but I just I, wanted to add it, you know, for completion. Yeah. It, entirely separate, separate thought going mm-hmm. back to the solar cells. <laughs> um, just look, looking at, at, at where we are now, um, headphones, just commercial headphones. Okay. Think about, you know, having a solar cell on your headphones that's They're outside an, oh you mean on on the band going over as yeah. opposed to like those ear pods that are just going to fall yeah. out okay but no like plenty of college kids have 
well, you have the earbuds, but plenty of them also have mm-hmm. ones like these because fully enclose the ears. That's one of the things that a lot of people just need. Yeah. Um, much more comfortable. But being able to put a solar cell there um, and have a means from that to then charge your electronic device that your your headphones are plugged into. At the very least, it would keep the 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 headphones charged. You know, because if you have a Bluetooth yeah. a Bluetooth wireless you know headset, yeah, you could do that then, too. Then just have that powered, and you don't have to worry about it. Just as long as you're wearing it and outside, or even just in light conditions. Because you know the like desktop calculators for the longest time yeah. that have that little solar cell in them, you know, even that just off, you know, regular room lighting is enough to to power it. So that could be the same kind of thing. So it Did could I, be could be the same thing for um, uh, keyboards. Yeah, yeah. You know, any wireless electronic like that, as long as yeah. it's in a mouse in light. Yeah. Well, m- mice maybe not. I think with mice we need induction charging. So you'd have the the charging pad that's itself that is collecting power and radiating it back up. The other thing would be, be being able to capture the heat of your hand and using that to power Ooh. the device. Now that's an idea. That's an idea. And there was that girl that that won that science competition uh, by creating basically it was a hollow device uh, that it was just two different bimetals that reacted with the, this the difference in heat. So the inside was one metal, and the outside was was another. And as you held it, the heat from your hand created the charge, and it powered the light. Nice. Yeah, she she won a prize, and she's awesome. And she was like 12. (laughs) Young minds tackle Mm -hmm. old problems in new ways. Yeah, just brilliant. It's like, just hold the thing, and it's on. Hi, sneaky ninjas. Sneaky Ninjaners, welcome, welcome back. Yeah, surprise show. Um, we just we determined at the end that we had too many things to talk about, so we're back. So hopefully with uh, less less negative things and uh, more positive things. So let's <laughs> see where were we? Oh yes, okay. So that India. was India. Uh, that was the that was the research there. India just set a new world record for satellite launches in a single day. Now, not just from a single day, but from a single rocket. Oh. This wow, is, is that 104 satellites in 18 minutes? Is that what yes. that says? Yes, 104 satellites in 18 minutes. So Jesus. microsatellites? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so while traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, India's PSLV rocket released 104 satellites in an interval of just a few seconds, breaking a single-day satellite launch record set by Russia in 2014. Take that, Russians. That's right. Uh, And Americans. India is quickly proving itself to be a cost-effective alternative to the U.S. and Europe for satellite launches, but this increase in launches could lead to more space debris, which it clearly does lead to more space debris. Now, if these are the microsatellites, they don't have a long life anyway, and their orbits will decay. If they are slightly larger, and they're like right at that sweet spot, depending on where they're released then yeah, they're going to be up there for decades. Before their orbits finally decay enough that they'll just plunge. Some of the orbits don't decay. At least so some of them actually increase. Like, Still, like how the moon, the moon is actually... The garbage up there. The moon is escaping our, our pole by mm-hmm. a couple centimeters every year. It's obviously very slow, but yeah. Yeah. So the, there is that possibility. You know, if you're in that sweet spot, you're going to just fall forever in that nice circular orbit and no, no problems. Of course, it's not going to be circular. It's going to be elliptical because even the Earth is elliptical. So anyway, moving on. So, but it's either going to, to fall out or fall in. The likelihood is that they fall in for a retrograde. Yeah. Um. The biggest fear right now is called the Cascade. This is where one object collides with another object, creating many more smaller objects, which then those objects out of control hit 
more objects, and then you have a logarithmic progression. Well, no, I'm, or exponential um, progression Eventually. of debris, which would blanket the sky in little tiny shards of death. Yeah. So that's the biggest fear of having all that space debris. Japan is working on solutions to that. Hopefully that's something that uh, that Musk thinks that he needs to work on too after he's done drilling holes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Again, the, the, the magnetic netting to just capture this stuff and then bring it down. Yeah. But the thing is, you'd have to shoot something up there to do that. With the possibility of creating more space debris. So, yeah, we have a problem with trash as as a as a species and a planet. We need essentially a vessel that can get up there, mm -hmm. troll, or turn. Yeah, just burn itself up with all the trash in it. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's kind of what we need, but that's the. <sighs> that hey, would private cost, industry, do that thing. But that would cost mm -hmm. a lot of money and not have any return on that investment. Oh, there'll be returns because there are plenty of corporations that need space for their satellites. And yeah, but space is saying, but space is amazingly large. Even with all the debris <laughs> that we have, there's still room for crap. But yes, what now? But we, if we're going to go to Mars, we're going to need to have. A clear vector. <clears throat> yeah, but you're looking forward. These people don't look forward. They look immediately what's in front of them. They don't think think ahead very well. There's some visionaries that do. and Yeah, like Warren Buffett. Hi, you want to make Warren Buffett money? Get started. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, again, the, the rare. The, that 1%, as it were. Um, you want to be Elon Musk? This is how you be Elon, Elon Musk. Yeah. Now, now, okay. Here's a way to make money off this. Because that's the problem. You have to make it worth their while. It's got to be worth the investment. It goes up there, Bond villain style, and steals the satellites and brings them back. Unnecessary. No, it's, it's completely necessary. Why not? It's already refined stuff. A lot of it's titanium. A lot of it's gold. So you're looking at space recycling. Yes. Space I recycling. I think India can do it, too. Because they can launch the rockets cheaper than anyone else. Even Musk. Yeah. So, they just launched 104 up there. Now they got to go get 104 back. I think that... No, no, no. Well, no, well that's... Then you get 208 back. Yeah, that's that's the Trump deal, right? For every one, yeah. you gotta, you got to take back two. Yeah. <laughs> you launched 104, you got to take back 208. There you go. <laughs> 404, satellite not found. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so that's awesome and cool and obviously has some implications because we can just go on and on and, and riff for that. Oh, yeah. Um, now, um, here's an interesting one. Five HIV patients left virus-free with no need for daily drugs in early vaccine trials. Yeah, this is the one that I got real excited about. Um. Uh, a new vaccine-based treatment for HIV has succeeded in suppressing the virus in five patients, raising hopes further research could help prevent AIDS without the need for daily drugs. Researchers combined two innovative HIV vaccines with a drug usually used to treat cancer in the trial, conducted over three years at the... Uh, Ursi Kaixa AIDS Research Institute in Barcelona. I'm going to go with exactly that. You you did beautifully. <laughs> After receiving the treatment, the virus was undetectable in five out of 24 participants, and its spread was stopped by their immune systems. One of them has been drug free for seven months. Woohoo! Progress. Yeah, it's definitely a, a really promising step forward. Yeah. So, I um. I learned just recently of something that uh, that I guess was made common knowledge, but not widespread. Um, back when the 
the AIDS virus and HIV were were just coming into into awareness mm. when the blood banks were vulnerable mm-hmm. and people could contract it from just having a transfusion. Mm-hmm. One of the people that passed from that was Isaac Asimov. Really? Yeah. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah, he contracted it uh, during a transfusion when he was in the hospital. And the the estate waited to release that information until the the his physician passed. Mm-hmm. So as to not sully his name as well. Right. So, but yeah, that's, that's something that happened. Yeah. It's like, wait, what? I heard that and it's like, whoa, no, no way. But yeah, that was, that's out there. You can find it. Um, so HIV, uh, it's not just for those gays and the queers and the LGBT. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's anybody with a pulse. Yeah, so, um, what, I mean, what, we've had outbreaks all over the place. Um, I know here in Florida, um, where we one of our hotspots is uh, Glades, Bell Glade. Um, there was also a large outbreak out in Siberia, of all places. But considering how much there is to do, I'm not too <laughs> surprised. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it to just hit the villages, you know, because same reason. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the villages have uh, an inordinate amount of sexually STDs. Trans- STIs. Yeah. yeah, just flying about. Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. Because well, I mean, I would I would wager a guess that most of those people who are affected in the villages specifically are the ones that don't believe in birth control and well, they're everything also, else. They're so. too Actually, old it's not to just have that, kids. But there are there are a lot of again. Folks that just don't know how to have safe sex. Well, that's that's what I mean. Is that they're they're the ones who are fighting against like the education for oh you know beyond abstinence and and I, I worded well, it, that poorly. It, it's 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 yeah. not just that, but there's also just plain straight up innocent ignorance as opposed to malicious ignorance. Uh, there's a yeah. big bit of both, um, especially when it just it it, it comes to HIV and AIDS because how it was demonized for such a long time uh, as it, it being a gay disease mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or something that, you know, junkies got mm. instead of it being treated as as the, the vicious and insidious infection that it is. And indiscriminate. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it does not care. No. no, it gives no shits like, you know, any other virus for the most part. But was what was really uh, heartening to me was the part of this that says that um, they got their own immune systems to start fighting it off. Yeah. That was the part that really, even more so than the fact that, like, we combined these two vaccines and this cancer drug and we were able to come up with this thing that's effective in a, a certain percentage, the way it was effective in which... Um, you know, somebody's immune system is actually fighting this thing and winning, I thought was particularly heartening. Again, the, it's it's a mixture of standard scientific method and a bit of MacGyvering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's pretty much how medicine works. And of course, the uh, the advent of the, the CRISPR-Cas9 is definitely the Swiss Army knife of the genetics but, trade right now. Yeah, we're we're... I I love Neil deGrasse Tyson for this. We know more about our universe now than we've ever known before, and we still know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. So true. Well, I mean, even even when you think of, and this is this is slightly tangential, um, but we, even when you think of here. the fact that we don't know jack about our own oceans, yeah. And lately, the mm-hmm. discoveries that have been coming from oceanographers and um marine biologists as to new species that they're finding. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of innovation from that too, even health wise. We're still finding new kinds of spider folks. <laughs> um, th- there, there are species that are being found. We're also losing species left and right. 
Mm-hmm. There are things that we have lost a long time ago that we didn't realize were on our yeah. little blue ball. Now, that there's there's a couple problems there, of course, is that, yes, new species are emergent all the time, but by all the time, we're talking eras, like geological right. eras. You know, yeah. it takes a really long time for nature to do its thing. However, humanity in the last hundred years has changed the world mm-hmm. in ways that nature isn't used to. Yeah, so, I mean, even just having your cats live outside is having a devastating ecological effect mm-hmm. on the uh, the bird population. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely terrifying numbers there with the eradication of of bird species from just from having your cats live outside. People releasing their pet pythons on the glades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And pet, when you when anything. you eradicate a species, when a, when a species goes extinct, even even if you find one that's comparable, the the ecological damage that you're doing isn't necessarily going to be nullified by the fact that there's another one because they may serve completely different functions right. within their ecosystem. Like Darwin's finches, you know, there's a lot of different ones, and they all fill a niche within their tiny little microcosms. So, right. Yeah. 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 And I mean, just because I, I think it was, I, I could be incorrect here. We lost very recently the African black rhino. Is that correct? Yeah. It went extinct. And I, I had heard somebody be like, oh, well, we have other kinds of rhinos. And I'm like, yeah, dipshit. But like, they don't live in the same area necessarily. Or no, they don't know, feed on the necessarily the, the exact same fl- flora. Um, yeah, the it's, same parasites that live in one don't necessarily live in the other. There's yeah. there's a whole host of complications at a microscopic level that uh, people don't take into consideration. Yeah, it's it's like losing the bottlenose dolphin and saying, well, we still have orcas. <laughs> yeah, they're both part of the porpoise family, but they're very vastly different animals. Yeah, you're compare. You're not even. It's not apples to oranges at that point. It's giraffes to meth. Like, Whoa, giraffes to meth? Thing. Wow. Giraffes to meth sounds like an album. Yes. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Get on that, Internet. Get on that. <laughs> oh, um, Daniel, what you were referring to earlier um, was Halon's Razor, which is the um, never attribute to malice that which is adequately mm-hmm. explained by stupidity. Or I do another, that a lot. Or another way, don't assume bad intentions over neglect and misunderstanding. No, and I mean you're you're absolutely correct in that. I just think there is a level of irony there that, given the demographic, at least a portion of those people are the same people who are like, don't hand out free condoms, don't educate beyond abstinence, mm-hmm. and it's getting them into. You know, they're, they're reaping what they're reaping the whirlwind is what I'm saying. Some of them, not we, all of them. We would like them to. <laughs> we would like some of them to a little more. Again, purporting ignorance just ends up hurting a bunch of innocent people. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. educa- education is always the answer. It, it really, except it if really you're Betsy is. DeVos. Yeah. So we should probably talk about things like that. Let's the move. So law and order time. Yes, I think it's time to sally forth and move right along. So um, with that, if you've enjoyed what we've done here, let me maybe play some music over that. I, <laughs> I, can, I can do that, right? I think I can. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, there. If you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash Radio and get early access to full show content. You can also make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking. Uh, how about use your words? Tell somebody about us. That always helps. And of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com. Or if you're the more talkative sort, we have a phone number, 470-222-ORLY, that's 6759, and it is always ready to take your call or your text. 
And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been a really radio part of the Cowan, the Cowan, no, it's no longer part of the Cowan Services Network. No, no, no. It's part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the Music Rocket and Pimgia, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in just a minute.